Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU. And in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to jailbreak iOS 10.2 using the Yalu jailbreak, which has now been updated to include more devices, basically all 64 bit devices. We're going to talk about support in just a little bit, but you'll notice here that I am going to show you guys how to jailbreak 10.2 using my iPod touch sixth generation. So essentially this tutorial or guide is exactly the same as what I released a few days ago. We have the same exact stability. The only thing that's changed is just added device support, which is still absolutely awesome. So Great work, Hacker Luca Tedesco, as well as Marco Grassi. They're the two brilliant minds behind the release of this latest iOS 10.2 jailbreak. Without them, we simply wouldn't have a jailbreak. So big thank you to them. Absolutely fantastic work on this Yalu release. With that said, let's go ahead and get into everything you need to know related to this jailbreak because there is a lot, and I really do mean a lot. This jailbreak is different than really anything we've had in the past. The only thing that's kind of comparable is the Pangu jailbreak for iOS 9.3.x, but things are also a little bit different this time around because this is still listed as a beta jailbreak. And the reason why I'm releasing this video and why I released the last tutorial on it is simply because iOS 10.2 is still being signed and this jailbreak release is infinitely more stable than its predecessor being the one for iOS 10.1.1. So what that means basically with iOS 10.2 still being signed is that as of recording this video right now, you can still restore or upgrade to iOS 10.2 if you're on a lower firmware. So we actually did a video on it. It will be linked in your cards right now as well as down below in the description. If you wanna update from a lower iOS 10 firmware, even iOS 9, or you wanna downgrade from iOS 10.2.1, you still can just note that that tutorial will become irrelevant once Apple stops signing iOS 10.2, which should be relatively soon, so you need to get in right now. Also, if you do have an iPhone 7, because only iOS 10.1.1 is supported, your best bet to be able to jailbreak in the future is still iOS 10.2. Remember, I always recommend staying on as low of a firmware as possible, so if you're already on 10.2, great work, just stay where you're at. If you're on 10.2.1 or even iOS 10.3 beta, then it is definitely recommended that you down grade because who knows something could always happen in the future and you may end up being supported after all. So with that said, this is a semi-untethered jailbreak, so to speak, which essentially just means that while you don't need a computer to reboot your device every single time it powers off, you will actually have to rerun the application to in turn repatch the kernel every time your device reboots. It essentially has to rerun the chain of exploits to, like I said, repatch the kernel. And what that means is that if the application is deleted from your device or if you have to actually reinstall it because the seven day certificate has expired, then you're going to have to plug into a computer and you're going to have to reinstall it. But it's very easy. It only takes a few seconds as I'm going to show you guys in this tutorial, but you do need that application every time your device reboots. If you don't want to reboot and you can avoid rebooting though, that's completely fine. There's a lot of misconception floating around regarding how often you actually have to reboot your device. Just note that it doesn't really matter at all. You can leave your device powered on for weeks at a time. It has no negative impact or repercussions on the battery of your device because lithium ion batteries have absolutely no memory. So that's some good news there. And at least we have a jailbreak for iOS 10 now. Finally, it's definitely better than nothing and it is comparable to the iOS 9.3.x jailbreak in that sense. Now, like I said, this only functions on up to iOS 10.2, reason being is because iOS 10.2.1 patches the sandbox to kernel exploit that this jailbreak actually uses. It's a very powerful exploit, and like I said, it's now patched in the latest firmware, being iOS 10.2.1. Also, as for why it doesn't function on the iPhone 7 on 10.2 is because the iOS 10.1.1 memory protection bypass that is actually used in this jailbreak is fixed in 10.2 for only the iPhone 7, but it still persists in 10.2 for older devices. Now, before we really get into this and before I talk about device support, it is paramount that you actually do create a backup first inside of iTunes. So definitely connect your device to your computer via a standard USB cable and create a backup. That way, worst comes to worst, if Apple's still signing 10.2, you can essentially downgrade if you're having to fully wipe your device, and then you can restore from a backup. It's always best just to have a recent backup on hand. Like I said, just in case. Now, as for device support, like I said, this does actually support most 64-bit devices. And what I mean by most is just that, pretty much all of them. So the iPhone 6S, 
SE, iPad Pro on iOS 10 up to 10.2, as well as the iPhone 6, 5S, iPad Mini 2, Mini 3, Mini 4, and the iPad Air 1 on iOS 10 to 10.2, as well as, of course, the iPhone 6S Plus and the iPhone 6 Plus. Like I said, the iPhone 7 only works on iOS 10.1.1, which is very important to understand, though iOS 10.2 is still your best bet if you're trying to decide between 10.2.1 and 10.3 beta, as well as, of course, 10.2. Just go down to 10.2 while you still can and stay there until something is released for you because it's always a good idea to be on as low of a firmware as possible, as I've said many times in the past and as I will continue to say moving forward. Now, the iPad Air 2 is really the only 64-bit device that is not supported right now. Unfortunately, hopefully we will have an update and, of course, 32-bit devices are not supported yet either. It's unclear as to when if ever they will be added to Yalu, but if they are, I will let you guys know, so be sure to click that subscribe button below next to my channel name if you have yet to, that way you will be fully notified. All right, so let's get into exactly what you need to do to actually jailbreak. So essentially, you're going to have to download two things. First and foremost, you need Cydia Impactor, which is what we're going to use to sign the jailbreak application. So navigate to jailbreakme10.com on your computer in your browser of choice, and you're going to download Impactor. It's listed in step one right here. So essentially, you're just going to click on Windows or Mac, depending on which operating system you actually have on your computer. So of course, I I am running a Mac, I'd click on Mac. If I had a Windows-based PC, I'd click where it says Windows. Now, for Impactor, you're just going to have to drag the DMG to your Applications folder if you're on a Mac. If you're on Windows, it's gonna involve a little bit more. Essentially, it's just going to be a zipped file, and what you wanna do is extract it. Don't just open it. Ensure that you click the option to extract it, and then you'll be able to run the Impactor application. But once you have things going with Impactor, you're just going to need the latest version of Yalu downloaded. So up at the top on jailbreakme10.com, just click right where it says download now, and it will immediately download the latest version of the Yalu jailbreak. Now I recommend putting this IPA or application file on your desktop. Really, you can have it wherever, but you're going to have to drag it inside of Impactor, and it's definitely easiest if it is on your desktop to actually do so. All right, now quickly inside of iTunes, I just want to show you guys that my iPod Touch is in fact connected and we are running iOS 10.2. You can see right here it confirms we are in fact on iOS 10.2 and this is an iPod Touch 6 Gen or an iPod 7 comma 1. That's the identifier for the 6th generation iPod Touch. Now if your device hasn't connected to your computer in a while or it's the first time connecting to the computer that you're using, you will have to actually trust or authenticate the connection on your device. It will ask you to trust whereas on your computer it will ask you to click continue. You need to do both and iTunes needs to be able to recognize your device because essentially the computer has to establish that trusted connection between the two in order for Impactor to install anything on it. So once that connection has been established, you're good to go. Just make sure that you do create a backup inside of iTunes before proceeding if you have yet to. All right, so at this stage, I want you guys to open up Impactor and you'll just receive an interface that is similar to this. It may look a little bit different for you if you are on Windows, but essentially it's exactly the same and it's going to function the same. And just leave the dropdowns exactly as is. Make sure your device is in fact selected in this top dropdown. And for the lower one, don't even click it, just leave it as is. It should say install Super SU, AKA root my Android if you are on a Mac, but that doesn't matter. It's still going to actually install the IPA. What we have to do at this point is just drag over the application or the IPA file into the City Impactor interface, and it's going to immediately ask us to log in with our Apple ID and password. Let me explain to you guys exactly what's going on here before we actually proceed with this step. So essentially, this application, City Impactor, is created by the developer of Cydia himself, Soric. And what it's going to do is just pass along your Apple ID credentials straight to Apple's own servers because we're using a workaround to essentially install this jailbreak app onto our devices. In iOS 9, Apple introduced the option to be able to self-sign applications, so that way they figured, hey, we can get more developers to actually develop for iOS by not having to force them into paying that $99 a year fee to actually test apps that they develop 
develop and making Xcode free, which Xcode is how you actually develop applications for iOS. It's the program that you use on a Mac if you didn't know. But at any rate, developers can actually self-sign their own apps inside of Xcode using their regular Apple IDs without having to pay $99 a year. But here's the catch, it's only for seven days. So essentially we're making use of what already exists laid out by Apple and using it to install this jailbreak app. Now, like I said, your Apple ID and password are passed straight to Apple's servers. There's not an intermediary server or anything that actually collects them between City Impactor and Apple's own servers. It's just passing it straight through so that way it can sign the application and you don't have to use Xcode and you can also use it on Windows. So it's actually a pretty awesome utility. So like I said, we can go ahead and continue now. If you want to, you can actually create a throwaway Apple ID if you don't feel comfortable, but just note that nothing is going to happen if you do use your own Apple ID. And if you do have two-step verification actually enabled for your Apple ID, best thing to do is just to create a new one because you don't wanna have to disable it and re-go through that entire process. It is an absolute pain. You can only self-sign with an Apple ID that doesn't have two-step verification or authentication enabled. All right, so I'm going to enter the password here and I'm just going to click on OK. It will go through the signing process. Now on my Mac here, it is prompting me to export key access from my keychain. You wanna click allow to this if you're on a Mac and you may see something similar on Windows. Just definitely click allow to any pop-ups or prompts that you do in fact receive inside of Impactor. And there we go. We actually have it installed. It immediately jumped to the second homepage here and you can see we do have Yalu 102, AKA Yalu 10.2 to actually do jailbreak iOS 10.2. It's really as easy as that. And if you do have to reinstall it, whether it's because the seven days is up and you need to re-sign it or just because you accidentally deleted it, again, it only takes a few seconds to actually get things rolling. But you'll notice immediately when you actually try to open it up, you won't be able to. You will receive an untrusted developer prompt. That's because you actually need to authenticate your own Apple ID that we use to self-sign it inside of settings. That's all you have to do. So I'm going to launch up the settings app now and then just tap inside of general and you need to scroll down to the bottom to device management and once you do tap inside of device management you're going to see your Apple ID listed here under developer app just tap on it once you do you need to tap on trust and then you need to tap on trust again to the pop-up and after you've done that you will then be able to open the application so just pressing the home button there we're going to swipe over to the second page after trusting it and now we can open up Yalu. Now the first time you open it up, you will receive this pop-up. The same exact thing applies when you open Cydia for the first time. It just tells you that it may slow down your iPod, iPhone, or iPad. Just go ahead and tap on OK to that. And then you're going to tap on Go. It's as easy as that, but it may say failed. If it does, you will actually have to tap on Retry. Your device will just reboot, and then you need to do it again. This exploit and the way it works and actually has to race, it doesn't have a 100% success rate, but that's no big deal. You just have to retry if it doesn't work for you the first time. Eventually it will work most likely on the second try if it doesn't for the first one. And if you do see storage almost full, that's completely fine. If you are on a lower tier storage device, such as 16 gigabytes, like I am here on this iPod touch, you are going to receive that message. Don't worry. It's not almost full. It's just how the application actually has to write to the system partition. All right, guys. So here we go. You can see we are on a black screen right now. It is working on just patching the kernel. Once it's finished with that, it's going to respring and you'll be back up with Cydia. This is an incredibly fast jailbreak once you actually do get it installed on your device. The reason why this tutorial is a little bit longer than usual is just because there is a lot of information that you guys need to know about before actually taking the plunge and jailbreaking on iOS 10.2. All right, so now on the second page here, you'll notice we do in fact have Cydia. I'm just going to tap on it and it's going to open up. There is no more preparing Cydia. We can just open it now and it should just populate in just a second. I'm going to continue talking here until it does. All right, guys, so you can see we do have this pop-up. It says Cydia may slow down your iPod. That's fine, just go ahead and tap OK. You're only going to get that the first time you open it up. Now it is taking a little bit longer to load than usual, but once it does, I'm going to actually show you guys that we can successfully install something. We're going to install Substrate, which is what you have to install anyway to really get anything functioning. And also note that the current things that do function are very limited. 
All right, so you can see we now have Cydia. And I'm actually just going to scroll down to the bottom here, and you'll notice that it confirms we are on an iPod Touch 7,1 with iOS 10.2 running the latest version of Cydia. So how absolutely epic is that, guys? We now have more device support for the Yalu 10.2 jailbreak. Again, awesome work, Luca Tedesco. I couldn't be happier, and I'm sure you guys couldn't either. And if your device isn't supported yet, like I said, be sure to click that subscribe button. Hopefully it will be in the future. And if you're on an iPhone 7, hopefully we'll receive a new 10.2 solution or something later. Who knows? Maybe Pangu will come out with something. I'm incredibly hopeful for that. The future of jailbreaking is looking very bright. And guys, two more things before we actually wrap up. First and foremost, I want to show you that we can successfully install something via Cydia. So I'm just going to type and substrate right here and tap on search. All right, now we're just going to click on Cydia Substrate. Like I said, remember you're going to have to do this to be able to use really any tweak that does currently support iOS 10 and 10.2. Then tap on Modify up in the top right, followed by Install, and then Confirm, and you'll just see the typical or traditional Cydia install screen that essentially walks through all of the stages. And then you're just going to have to respring. It's as simple as that. But you can see that Cydia does function on the 6th Gen iPod Touch running iOS 10.2 jailbroken thanks to Yalu. So let's go ahead and tap on Respring. Once it comes back up, I'm just going to reboot and show you guys how you have to re-enable Cydia and what actually happens with Cydia once you reboot. So let's go ahead and wait for this to finish. All right, so now it is respringing. Of course, just the traditional black screen and spinning wheel that you receive during resprings. Let's go ahead and press the home button to unlock, swipe over, and we can use Cydia once again, but it's a little bit different when you reboot, so let's go ahead and do that now. And I'm just going to cut the reboot part out, so I'll be back up once this iPod touches as well. All right, so here we go. The device is back up. I'm going to swipe over and show you guys that Cydia simply doesn't load. That's because the kernel has yet to be repatched. And in order to do that, we have to open up Yalu 102 or Yalu 10.2. And if you don't have Yalu or if it's past the seven days, the certificate has expired, you're just going to have to delete it and reinstall it. Like I said though, it only takes a few seconds if you do have your computer handy. Now, once you are at this stage, after you've rebooted and you can use Yalu, you're just going to tap on go. And the same thing applies for when you're originally jailbreaking. It might in fact say failed. If it does, you just need to tap on it and it will reboot your device. But in this case, it didn't. If it just stays or looks like it's frozen, then essentially your device will go to a black screen, patch the kernel, and then respring, and you'll be good to go. And you'll be able to utilize Cydia once again. All right, here we are. We are at the lock screen. I'm just going to press the home button again. And I do apologize for that. My camera did kind of mess up there. The autofocus wasn't actually focusing on what it was supposed to, the iPod touch, but rest assured it works exactly the same as when we initially jailbroke it. All right, Insidia will in fact work now. Okay, so guys, I hope you liked this tutorial and I hope it helped you. As I mentioned toward the beginning, if your device isn't supported, be sure to click the subscribe button below. I will let you guys know if there are any updates to Yalu, whether they are the stability kind or whether they're the kind that add new support for new devices. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.